Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is the first installment of my mini series on uh, how to make an EDN track in uh, Reaper. I originally thought that uh, I will cover the whole topic in one uh, long video, basically focusing on the whole process from start to finish. But uh, then I realized that it would be a bit too long and uh, cumbersome for you to watch it. So I decided that I will split it into several episodes. The first episode you are watching right now will uh, cover just the basic setup of Reaper from the perspective of someone who has uh, never seen Reaper before. So I will go through uh, main settings and basic uh, track layout. And then in additional installments or uh, episodes I will uh, dig deeper and deeper into the uh, EDN track production in uh, Reaper. The second episode will cover creation of a basic uh, loop uh, using uh, individual VST instruments. Uh, so we will be creating a basic uh, rhythm and uh, bass line and uh, lead sound, other sounds that we will add uh, vocals. Then we will focus on uh, song uh, structure as such. Uh, we will look at uh, mastering a bit and then we will maybe cover a bit of uh, track promotion and uh, release. So let's get into it. So hello and welcome. I'm sitting in front of my PC. I have Reaper opened up. So this is the first screen you will see when you open Reaper. It's rather an uninviting environment, right? <laughs> Nothing too interesting <laughs> to be seen here. Uh, but it's not as bad as it looks and we will get quickly into the basic setup and uh, basic layout uh, I usually use. Uh, so first thing you will have to do is to set up your sound card. That's very easy. You will go to options and preferences. Then um, in this tab you will see audio and device. You will click on that and here um, you will select your audio device. In my case it's the Moto M series uh, ASIO driver. Um, then Reaper takes over the ASIO configuration of the of your ASIO driver. So in my case it looks like this. Uh, this is the sample rate, this is the buffer size which gives me around uh, 9 milliseconds of latency. Uh, it might, might seem a bit too much for some um, uses but I don't record any live instruments or anything and um, this means that the CPO doesn't work that hard and uh, it's more than enough for my purposes. So that's the first step. The second step would be setting the MIDI in device. It's the second tab here. You will click on this one. In my particular case I'm using Impact GX49 as my MIDI device. I have basically input all and control somehow. It works nicely. So this is the second thing you will have to go through. Then the third really important thing is setting up the VST plugin path. So you will tell Reaper where to uh, look for VST plugins. It's the same tab and you will uh, click on uh, plugins and VST here. Um, then edit path list and you will specify the paths in which you um, install VST plugins and Reaper go through them and it will load it into its own database and it refreshes this database um, every time it starts so it will find any newly installed VST plugins. Then I will talk about customization a bit. Um, you would like to customize keyboard shortcut and uh, what the mouse is doing and how it's acting when you use Reaper. So if you install Reaper, uh, I think that it doesn't work too well when it comes to using keyboard and mouse, at least in my opinion. I wanted uh, Reaper to be a bit closer to FL Studio and that's why I downloaded a customization file from Reaper forums. Then the Reaper behavior became a bit better. Um, but uh, anyway, um, no matter what you download from Reaper forums, you will most likely have to customize it yourself a bit. Uh, and customization is done through actions. So you will click on action window and then show action list. And action basically uh, means anything in Reaper. No? <laughs> anything Reaper does uh, can be marked as action. And there is like one million actions here and you can uh, assign shortcut to any action. Uh, so any customization which is not so nerdy and geeky nobody understands it uh, is done through this particular window. Um, in case you would like to use my custom configuration it's relatively easy to do um, because I have already uh, 
saved my customization setting and you can load them and Reaper will work the same way um, as in my case. Uh, the way you load customization settings into Reaper is the following. You will click on options and preferences. Then you will go to general tab and you will click on import configuration. And um, this will basically allow you to import my configuration, um, which I downloaded and it's this file and I, I'm sharing uh, the link in the description below the video. You will see if this works for you or not. If it doesn't, don't blame me, don't, don't sue me or anything. <laughs> Just try to make your own customization file. Okay, so that's it. Uh, so we have a basic setup here. Now um, we will be inserting um, individual trucks and then we will load VSTs on that truck. In order to insert the truck, you will click on truck and insert new truck. You see that I have the control T shortcut assigned to this action using the Reaper terminology. So we will be inserting our first truck uh, and it looks like this. It just inserts the truck and doesn't do anything else. Then we will load a VST instrument into this truck. This is done by clicking the FX window and under the FX uh, tab you are basically putting VST instruments into this truck, you know, and you are uh, loading VST instruments and effects. Okay, so I will click on battery, which is the drum sampler I will be using. Double click on it and it loads. Okay, uh, then if you want to add effects, which would be affecting this individual instrument, uh, you will do it the way that you will also click on effects, effects and add effects. Okay, and uh, in this way we will uh, or we can uh, put a reverb on the battery. So in this way um, there is a battery loaded and there is a VST effect over the battery if I'm saying it in uh, the comprehensive way, but we will get it into this uh, later. I will delete it now. So that's just battery here. Uh, Reaper is really good when it comes to working with the trucks, as I said in uh, my first video. So I will name this truck kick and then uh, to make it a bit more uh, easy, I will just duplicate this track. So we'll right click on this track and click duplicate tracks. I will duplicate it two times. So it just copies everything, you know, the battery with the setup. Um, and um, so now I have like three batteries loaded into Reaper on three individual tracks. This will be my kick. This will be my snare. This will be my hi-hats. Okay, and now I would like to insert an audio track and I will be putting some percussion loop in that audio track. So we will insert another track. I will not put any VST here now. I will do it later. So I will name this percussion loop and now we will uh, load one more. Um, one more instrument. We will load um, Diva here. And that's it. This will be this will be our baseline. Okay, so this is the basic setup, and now we will insert two send channels, and we will be routing these instruments into these two send channels. Okay, so we will insert new two new tracks. I will just mark them and move them up, just like this. Okay. This will be our reverb send and this will be our, our saturation send and that's it. Now when it comes to basic routing, uh, if you click on this little window, it allows you to send signal from this channel to any channel and we will be sending it to these channels. So I will click on it add new send. We are sending it to reverb and uh, I'm sending the amount of signal being sent to reverb channel to minus 20 dB. 
Uh, that's some starting point and I will fine tune it later. Okay, minus, oh, minus 20, something like that. Now I will use a big of a geeky feature of Reaper, which has this really nice uh, nerdy uh, routing matrix. This is what it looks like. It's awesome, I really like this. Um, we now see that kick goes into the reverb sand and it has like minus 20 dB. We will just use a mat uh, mouse button, we will left click left mouse button and we will, we will drag it down and now we are sending all these channels into reverb. We will use the same in case of saturation send. So I will click here and I will specify one click. It inserts the send. Second click, it asks you how much signal you want to send there. It's minus 20 in our case. And again, I will just click it, drag it down. And now we are sending everything from these tracks to, to saturation send. Okay, so now we will just um, assign some colors to our tracks. I'm usually uh, leaving this uh, gray. And in, in this case, um, if you right click on the track, then track color, then custom, col custom color, my drums are usually white. Then I have a shortcut Alt C for color on the individual tracks. So drums will be white. And baseline is a bit darker, so it's like, I don't know, brown. Okay, so this is our basic track setup. Now we will be adding some uh, MIDI items into these tracks. In Reaper you are basically switching between two or three main screens, you know. This is the first screen, then the second screen is the MIDI editor, and the third screen might be a mixer, uh, and that's pretty much it, you know. So now um, we will be creating the MIDI items. So I will insert new MIDI item onto this track and it inserts it this way. I have also created a keyboard shortcut from, for inserting MIDI items. So in my case it's control and drag, control, drag, control, drag, that's it. Okay, so we don't need it in these two channels. These are just the send channels, but we need it for these channels, right? So now we have the basic MIDI items inserted into the tracks. Okay, I will also make them a bit longer. So this is the basic setup. For now, I think it's enough. And uh, I will cover um, the rest in my next video. Okay, so this is the end of the video. I think that we covered pretty much uh, all uh, the basic stuff and the basic layout. And it will serve as a basis for uh, next video in which uh, we will uh, focus on the creation of individual loop. So stay tuned and uh, see you next time.